welcome to the Howler Podcast. I'm Chelsea. And I'm Mary. And we are on episode 10, which is wild, which I say every episode, but I mean it. But it is wild, and I'm pretty sure our first episode launched in July of 20... Was it July? It was sometime last late summer. Yeah, because we 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 did start the our first couple of episodes. We launched internally, and then we released them externally um, a little bit later. So yeah, I don't really remember what month the first podcast was released, but we're probably get close to our one year anniversary. Which we Chelsea and I have talked about this, but we need to do like a one year anniversary celebration because we definitely have some what we consider hilarious stories. I don't know. We gotta bring them out of the vault. To bring things out of the vault from some highlights, some never before heard clips. Yes. We 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 believe we have a strong blooper reel somewhere within all the footage. So we're gonna we're gonna work with Alex, our lovely podcast producer, to see if we can put together like a one year anniversary Howler podcast blooper reel. Um, because there are some clips that I think the people deserve to see and hear. <laughs> but anyway, so June, we're recording this in June. You all will hear this in July, but it has been a really exciting time at the pack. It's pride. Happy pride. Mm-hmm. We just had a panel event this week. That was so powerful. Chelsea yeah. and I were sitting next to each other front. Well, technically second row seats. <laughs> <laughs> to this incredible panel, we had Nick from Mosier, Nick Alm from Mosier, um, moderating and some incredible leaders sharing their stories. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was so nice to hear. It was wonderful to bring in Nick as an external speaker and, a, and an expert in the space. But what I really took away and what I loved about the panel discussion is that we were hearing from PAC members that were in all different phases of their journey. Um, and it was a lot about, um, you know, like allyship and you're going to, and, and allowing and accepting that you're going to make mistakes, but that's part of the journey. Um, so PAC members really shared like their personal connections and experiences, um, within the LGBTQ plus community, and then kind of like how they've navigated, um, those experiences and, those mistakes and how they've learned from them. So it was kind of nice to hear, yeah, a, a maybe different perspective than I think you usually would during Pride Month. I feel like we usually bring in, um, again, people like Nick, who are amazing. Um, but it was nice to kind of get that mix of, of people in all different places. Yeah. And I, one of the things that really stuck with me after the event was a quote Nick shared. And I, I wonder if you remember who they attributed it to. But we yeah. shared a quote that said, we can be compassionate before we have comprehension. And just mm-hmm. that reminder of like kindness and treating each other like human beings that are worthy of kindness and respect and, and being compassionate, even if we don't fully understand yet. Mm-hmm. Maybe yeah. I don't know. Do you remember yeah. who they um, attributed that quote to? I think it's a. I think it's an individual named Alok, um, who is a like writer, performance, performance artist. Um, I think it's Alok, how you say it? A-L-O-K. Don't quote us though. We need to confirm that that's the person, but that is who's popping up in my mind right now. Yeah, we love that quote. I think everyone in the audience, there was a collective like, <gasps> when Nick shared that. Um, so yeah, a little nugget for you all to take home today from the podcast, um, that you can find compassion before comprehension. Okay. Well, should we jump in? I think we should. Yeah. Okay. It's our 10th episode and we are interviewing Steve Craig. He's our chief revenue officer. So Steve is responsible for leading global acquisition sales, sales enablement, sales development, customer success, and channel sales go-to-market teams. He brings over 15 years of sales experience with a variety of technology companies in various stages, including startup, growth, and enterprise companies. 
Prior to his current position, Steve served first as Arctic Wolf's Vice President of Sales and then as Senior Vice President of Sales and General Manager Americas. Without further ado, let's welcome Steve to the podcast. Okay, welcome to the podcast, Steve. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Okay, fun. Well, we always start the podcast with a little fun, like, would you rather, some trivia. It's all based off what we know about our guest. Um, and so what we know about you is you're originally from the East Coast, correct? That's right. Um, but you've now lived in the Midwest for quite a while. So we're going to play just a quick, fun little this or that based off of like regional slang and terminology. Okay. Like, what are we calling things? Okay. So we'll start off easy. Soda or pop? Soda. Okay. Do you ever say pop now or no? Uh, not unless I'm making fun of my wife. <laughs> okay. Your kids say soda or pop being that they're... Men- like, I think they say so. I think I've won that battle in the household. <laughs> okay. 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 Um, okay. This one, the luminous bugs that you see in the summertime, what do you call those? Lightning bugs. Okay. Not fireflies. Nope. Correct. Okay. Um, some of these I didn't even know. Do Wait, you- which one is which for that one? Minnesota is fireflies? Yeah, well, and some of them are just general regional, like lightning bugs, I think is more like east and south. And then like west coast, Midwest is fireflies. Whatever we say here, people are going to disagree and be like, well, no, I actually call it this. (laughs) But these are just generalizations, obviously. Um, This one, I don't know. I don't know what your take is going to be. I'd never heard this. Do you call it a milkshake or a frappe? Milkshake. Okay, apparently New Englanders call them milkshakes frappes and they call chocolate milk milkshakes. Interesting. I haven't heard, I haven't heard that one. Um, do you call it a lollipop or a sucker? A uh, lollipop, but I think I've I've gotten sucked into the sucker with <laughs> my family. Okay. Yeah. yeah, some of these I was like, oh, it's a sucker. <laughs> It's so funny. Yeah, so the Midwest is more sucker yeah. and Northeast is lollipop. Okay, sneakers or tennis shoes? Sneakers. Yeah, I'm also an East Coaster, so I'm going to agree with you on most of them. Um, Mary, do you call them tennis shoes? I call them tennis shoes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyway, my, my wife is tennis. She's from the Midwest. She's from yeah. the Midwest. Um, okay, just a couple more. Do you call it a garage sale or a yard sale? Oof. Um, it depends if it's in the garage or the yard. (laughs) Valid. That's very valid. Apparently East coast is yard sale. Um, and other places are garage sale, but I do think I'm with you. I think it depends. Um, a roundabout or a traffic circle. Um, East coast traffic circle, I think, but I think roundabout is my preferred nomenclature now. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Nice. We've converted you on that one. I converted. <laughs> and then the last one, sprinkles or jimmies? Sprinkles. Okay. I mean, jimmies is weird. Can yeah. we all just own that? Like, well, there's sprinkles in there. Ice cream. I've never heard of that before. <laughs> if you said that to me, I would have zero idea what you're talking about. Well, I learned when I visited the Newcastle office that they call sprinkles thousands it's something weird like the hundreds and thousands <laughs> is what they call it in the uk i'm not joking you guys it's something it's something interesting like that i'm pretty sure it's hundreds and thousands newcastle pack correct me if i'm wrong in the comments but i was like you you're like can i get some ice cream with some hundreds and thousands like that seems like a waste of breath like that's <laughs> like a lot of words that's a lot of but Anyway, okay, well, thank you for entertaining us with this fun, this or that. I was curious where you'd land since you've lived here for so long, but it seems like the East Coast roots are still strong, which is good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, we'll get into the more serious questions, as they say. Um, so we always like to start off just learning a little bit more about our guests and their journey. So we want to go back in time when you were younger what did you want to be when you grew up? Um, 
And actually, let's just start there, and then we'll, we'll have some follow-up questions. Uh, what did I want to be when I grew up? Uh, I, you know, I think I always like aspired to be a lawyer, but uh, oh. after college, I had no more aspirations to go go through law school. So, um, mm-hmm. I think what like drew you to law? I don't know. I like when you're a kid, you just kind of associate something with something. Okay. If if you ask me what my what my uh, elementary school, you know, middle school self thought of of a, of a career path at that point, you know, it would have been lawyer. But far far from where I landed. So, what about like preschool, Steve? Was there ever like a firefighter era? Uh, no, I, I would probably say athlete at that point. You know, okay. soccer player, baseball player at that stage. But yeah, okay. That, that also didn't really. Happen. <laughs> Did you play those sports? Like growing up, I played uh, I played soccer and baseball, um, uh, soccer through high school and baseball uh, up up until high school, and then um, I ran track in high school uh, and cross country in in high school and college. Okay. Oh wow! Is that how you and Nick met running at in school? Yeah, we both ran it at Duke. That's where that's okay. where we met. We were Nick was a year year ahead of me, so that's where we first crossed paths. Okay. Small world. Yeah. And so then we see you have a degree in public policy studies. So what led you to sales? Like, just tell us a little bit about your career journey. Like, how did we get here? Um, so, so public policy studies is like a merger of econ and poli sci, sort of like meets like a practical application of, of those two, you know, studies. And it actually, it was a it was a good major in college. I really enjoyed it and use a lot of the framework I think today still and even in this in this job in this capacity because you have to sort of frame up a, a problem, uh, put together you know sort of the, a thesis of how you're going to solve it. And you have to do it in you know succinct ways, and that's a lot of what you do in sales and in, and in, in leadership. So, uh, but I I wasn't seeking out a career in sales. I think Nick had. Nick pinged me after uh, uh, I think it was May time frame was about to graduate and um, suggested I talk to Brian Bell, our, our ex chief customer officer, now exited you know corporate retirement. And Brian interviewed me um, for an inside sales role at our Guelph, and um, I was kind of thinking about taking a year off and doing something I wouldn't have historically ever done before. I had a job. <laughs> Crewing in catamarans and in, in the Caribbean. Uh, no I had a lead on a job at like doing fly fishing tours in Alaska. And oh my God. Nick, uh, Nick and Brian persuaded me to come to Minnesota instead and work in a tech company. And that's kind of where it started. Oh, wow. And no regrets. I mean, no. obviously, it's hugely impactful in your journey and meeting your wife. And... No, no, no regrets. It's been a fun ride. It, uh, sometimes it'd be nice to go. <laughs> To the Caribbean for a year, uh, yeah. But we'll we'll have time, I'm sure, at some point. So that was was that compellent? That was that first. Yeah, that was compellent. Data storage startup, not too far from our Imperial office, right across the you know 494 over on Lake okay. Savannah Drive. So um, compellent was about 50 people at the time. So it's just an early early stage growth company, and um, I was one of the first couple SDRs uh, on the team, actually with Mr. Joe Burns as well. At the wow. the goal. He's on our um, large enterprise leadership team also. Crazy. What a journey. So when you were at Compellent, what was your, what was your experience like there? Were you in that, were your SD, the SDR role the entire time you were there? Or did you grow in leadership at Compellent as well? Uh, no, I, I look, I think one of the great things about growth tech companies is they afford people that opportunity to sort of, you know, grow their mm-hmm. career and, you know, move on to the next role as you, know, you kind of earn, earn your way up the ladder and, um, I started as an SDR and moved on to a partner development rep working, you know, with our channel partners and you know, we were a channel company as well. And I think that's where the TNA I think comes from a lot of in our channel first thinking about the growth and routes to market, but, um, moved on to, uh, uh, an account executive. And that's when I moved back to Philadelphia and, uh, kind of ran the mid Atlantic region for about five years, um, <laughs> stepped into management, leading a district, um, at Compellent right before we got acquired um, by Dell. So that was a fun, fun little journey. You know, we went public and 
shortly thereafter got acquired by Dell. It was, it was a pretty big transition. Yeah. And then after that, you were at Code 42 and then Arctic Wolf. So you seem to enjoy the technology industry and have stayed in the startup arena. What do you think you has most like attracted you to this industry? Uh, so I, like got here, got got stuck, I guess you'd say. <laughs> But it's but it's a great um, it's a great space to be in. Obviously, there's a ton of investment in in tech in general, and yeah, I think tech solves real world problems uh, for businesses and, and and people alike. And it's always fun to you know work in an industry and for a company where you know you, you can drive meaningful outcomes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's measurable, right? I mean, you can oftentimes you can you can understand the impact you're making, and you can um, you know, through sales, like you, you spend a lot of time uncovering what our customers are going, our prospects are going through and, and how their requirements map to, you know, what we can help them solve. And that's, that's a, that's a fun part of it. I think sales career path inside of tech. Um, mm. along the journey. Um, you've shared, you started your career as an SDR and you are now our chief revenue officer. So curious, like what are some of the biggest challenges moving from like day-to-day selling to like leading an entire sales org. Uh, yeah, they're, they're a bit different, uh, <laughs> but you're you're always you're always selling. I mean, I think selling is just like a like that's mm-hmm. a foundational skill in in any role in business, whether you're in sales or you're in another function in the in the in the business. You're selling something, right, uh, all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think in this role. It's it's been fun. Like each step along the journey, you're kind of taking on a slightly different responsibility, but it's all grounded in trying to you know remove obstacles and allow the team to be more effective and, and sell more. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think for me though, the biggest challenge <laughs> and uh, you know really understanding you know, the the finance aspects of the business and really mm-hmm. appreciating you know more of the the contractual the legal ramifications of it it's it's always mm-hmm. fun and we, we have a great team that obviously you know supports mm-hmm. each of the executive leadership team and understanding those pieces of the business uh, effectively i'm curious um like if you were to compare all of the sales teams and orgs you've been on at your different companies like what's different about the team that we've built here at arctic wolf and the way that we work like what what would maybe make us special or stand out yeah look we have a we have a great team, I think, from the, the ground up. I think one of the unique things ab- about this sales organization that's, I think, different than companies I've worked with in the past is sort of the tight relationship between sales and marketing. There's a really strong interplay between um, sales, demand, uh, product marketing. And I think that definitely differentiates how we go to market versus some of our competitors where those might be more siloed functions, not as strong of a relationship. It's a lot of really nimble uh, in the, the programs and the packaging and the um, uh, the marketing campaigns that we drive and run. And I think I think that's that's pretty unique about it. But um, we, have, we have great culture. I think the whole company does right on the outcome, uh, customer first mentality. Um, you know, we're a channel first company as well. And I think a, across a lot of sales organizations, not everybody's used to working inside of a, a channel first company. It's, it's, it's unique. And I think we have a lot of folks who have come to Arctic Wolf where, where that's a new, that's a new muscle, it's a new motion and it takes a while to get used to, but it certainly does differentiate our sales culture uh, versus, versus other companies out there. Very cool. Yeah. I think the culture we have here is incredibly special and, and is unique across the board when, and in different departments as well. So, um, okay. See, so leaning a little bit into leadership, tell us about, um, you know, how do you define leadership and how have your leadership philosophies evolved through your career and as you've grown as a leader? Ooh, uh, I would say ongoing, <laughs> <laughs> continually evolving. I think, um, you know, I think leadership is one of those things you have to sort of stay in tune and, uh, you know, keep your ear to the ground and make sure that you're, you're changing with the times that, uh, you know, the last two years across our business have, have shifted and, you know, we've had to pivot as a company, but I think, you know, the, the primary goal in leadership is you're helping elevate the team, right? So they can, they can achieve their, their potential, hit their goals. And hopefully that's aligned with the company hitting their goals. So mm-hmm. making sure that we're working to set 
achievable goals is a big piece of that. And I think that's a that's an ongoing endeavor that we're we're committed to making sure we get the balance right. Over your career, have there been like pieces of wisdom or advice that leaders have given you that have been um, really impactful on your journey? <laughs> yeah, there's been there's been a lot along the way. Uh, huh, there's there's a there, there's some of those ones that stick out where they they weren't necessarily leadership advice, maybe, but I remember when I was an S, I think it was a maybe SDR converted to first time sales rep. And we had a executive, what do we, we had a sales offsite meeting and our senior vice president of sales was, was running the show at the time. And, uh, we were kind of in the Q and a part. I had made a recommendation to like, Hey, we should do some training around, you know, how to structure financing and leasing arrangements. And hey, I was, I was expecting to get, yeah, that's a really great idea. And, and the feedback was, well, you know what, you, you should probably invest in yourself at some point. And I thought that was like, oh. Wasn't expecting that, but well, it, was a, it was a great like life lesson. Like sometimes you have to just kind of own the outcome and you got to like put the time in to, to learn, learn the trade. And then, and then you go from there. So I think that was a foundational like engagement. I wasn't exactly expecting that one, uh, but that's been formational. And then I had another, uh, I, I was, I was working as a, as an account executive. And I was covering a large uh, Fortune 100 company here locally. And we had a really strong partnership with the senior vice president of uh, infrastructure and operations. And one of, one of his things that he, just, he always repeated was that you can't measure it, you can't manage it. And I think that's a critical like, piece of it mm -hmm. is you have to understand where, where you're trying to go and how you're going to get there. And if you, if you can't you know, measure what you're trying to achieve, and it's really difficult to manage it along the way. And I think, I think those are two good pieces. Yeah, no, such good pieces. Well, it's interesting too. I think it says a lot about you, how you took that first piece of feedback. I mean, you, I mean, maybe it's kind of was off putting at first, but like, it sounds like you took it and like learned from it and it was formative and like you growing where some people could just be like, oh, that was rude. And I'm just going to be like a stick in the mud about it and be like, I felt that way at first. <laughs> I think like all people do, right? Like it's a natural reaction, but but then to be able to like look at it again and like see learning in it and be better because of it. Yeah. I'm curious, like what action did you take after hearing that feedback of like work on yourself? Like did you like what did you do in that moment? Do you remember? I bought a finance book and <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Try and figure out how to structure leasing agreements more effectively. <laughs> Sounds like fun stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but what about circle? Interesting, because you said like, you know, one of the biggest differences of being a seller versus leading the selling is like understanding that financial component of the business. So mm -hmm. maybe yeah. it's to your career. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it certainly has impacted it. And you know, there's a certain, um, there's the finance side of the business metrics that you really have to appreciate. And that's that's been an ongoing, you know, growth trajectory. Um, mm -hmm. You know, grow through your Arctic Wolf. Well, that kind of lends itself nicely to our next question. Um, what professional skills do you think everyone should develop, regardless of their role? Oh, <laughs> uh, well, I think sales in general is is something that everybody uh, should acknowledge, whether they think they're in sales or not. They're in sales. Uh, you know, when you work for a company, and um, that's something that I think everybody should strive to get comfortable with at, at some level. Certainly, if you're going to go into sales. Uh, or marketing, even uh, it's probably a little more pronounced in your in your day to day. Uh, the the finance side, I think, I think is really important, even for personal reasons. I, that's that's a that's a good thing to invest in. And then Excel skills, I think, <laughs> Excel is such a powerful tool if you understand how to how to use it effectively. And certainly, I think as you you grow in your career, it, whether in sales or business or, or finance or marketing. Uh, that's mm -hmm. a powerful tool. Would you say you're like an Excel whiz? <laughs> no. What would you rate yourself? Well, I, I, I would, I would rate myself as adequate. Uh, we have some <laughs> folk here who are just uh, super impressive, and my skills pale in comparison to that. <laughs> yeah, I would say I always think I'm good at, at Excel until I see someone that's good at Excel. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I have a lot to learn. That's right. Yeah. 
Yeah. But I love what you said about whether you think you're in sales, whether you think you're in sales or not, you are in sales. And it makes me think of um, like what Adam Murray always says as like, we're all on the security team here at Arctic Wolf. And I love, it's just reminding us that like we all are a pack and we're all in this together and we're all in the sales team. We're all on the security team. We're all part of like building our culture and making it strong. Um, it's not just, we're not just working in these silos like you referenced earlier with like sales and marketing working so closely together. So I think that just like drives the message home again, which I love. Yeah, no, I think it's a great observation. Really agree. Okay. Switching gears here a little bit. See, we always like to ask our leaders about well-being um, and how that interplays into their work and life and success. So how do you prioritize well-being, whether that be physical, mental, et cetera, um, both for yourself and for your team? What does that look like for you? Uh, yeah. So look, I, <laughs> speaking of growth, I mean, it's probably another area that I, you know, I have to continue to prioritize. And uh, look, I think you have to have balance and, you know, you're in this line of work, in this space, in this sector, there's a, there's a lot of demands and things are constantly coming at you and constantly changing it. I think you just have to sort of have that line that just exists. And when you need to take a break, you need to take a breath and you take some time for yourself and your family, you, you take it. And I think Arctic Wolf does a great job as a company at giving all of us, um, you know, the flexibility to to make that decision when we need to make it. So certainly for my team, you know, as life events happen, as they need to take the time, they're they're welcome to take it. And uh, I know they're going to get, you know, the job done. What's like the last like PTO or like great trip that you've taken? Um, you know, <laughs> this is not, not exactly at the... My, my wife and I had a chance to go to uh, the indie race this just a couple weekends ago. Um, so it was kind of kind of work and, you know, uh, mm -hmm. life in harmony situation. But we had a ton of fun at, you know, the MSR sponsorship that we have with Meyer Shank Racing and the ability mm -hmm. to host and entertain, you know, partners and customers is is a ton of fun. That was that was a really awesome venue. I had never realized I'm not a, I'm not a big racing fan, uh, mm -hmm. but. What what an impressive race that was! Over three hundred thirty thousand people in mm -hmm. spot in Indiana. It was it was cool to see. So that was that was a ton of fun. I'm looking forward to Fourth of July weekend with the family. That that's always a good time. Spend a weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll week up in Eora, Wisconsin. So looking forward to making that that trip. So you're fully embedded in the cabin, the Midwest cabin life. We are fully cabin people. <laughs> My. Uh, Wife's family's been going to Eagle River, Wisconsin for like almost 50 years now. Oh, wow. The kind of family has a handful of cottages, <laughs> cottages, that's a, that's a Minnesota one, uh, in northern Wisconsin. And uh, we love spending time up there when we can. Okay. Mary, do you have anything else before we get to rapid fire? I don't think so. Fun learning a little bit more about your career story and leadership lessons. So thanks for that. Yeah. Steve. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for all the questions. I was gonna I was just gonna ask if before we got to rapid fire, if there was anything you just wanted to like say about the sales org and your team, um, and like what it's like working with, you know, this group of pack members. Yeah, no, I think um look, it's 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 certainly been um it's cert it's certainly been an honor to have the opportunity to to lead the team here and, and be a part of the, the growth trajectory. I think this quarter should be a major milestone, not just for sales, but the entire company. I, mm -hmm. I appreciate all the hard work across mm -hmm. the company. <laughs> okay, amazing. All right, well, we are now at the end of the podcast. We're back to some, I mean, all the questions are fun, but now we're back to some fun rapid fire. So this is just first thing that comes to your head. All right, perfect. Okay, best concert of your life. That concert, I, Coldplay, Coldplay back in the day. That was a college. Oh, that was a great concert. I'm very jealous about Coldplay. They're on my list, and I still haven't seen them. Um, so great answer. People <laughs> listening to the podcast are probably tired every time we get to this question. Someone says something, and I'm like, "Yes, I love it." <laughs> but I do, I do love, I do love Coldplay. Um, okay. Favorite word? Oh, uh, pressure. <laughs> uh, pressure. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's timely. Um, 
I, I think pressure is a good word. It's mm-hmm. worth it by the word of the month for me. Um, so, but yeah, to your point, like there's diamonds are made out of pressure. Like there's some positive connotations. Yeah. Oh, no. Pressure creates change, creates opportunity. Um, okay. A place on your bucket list. So we, we have four kids now. Um, my wife and I had a, tr- we went to, we went to Maui five or six years ago. We've always wanted to get the family to go on a cool trip to an island mm-hmm. location. Um, I would say taking the family to Hawaii is a big one. Um, when we when we had our first, we had a we found out we were having our first uh, child. We <laughs> we had a really cool trip to Italy planned, and we ended up canceling it because that would have been about the time we were having our first child. So mm-hmm. uh, we still want to get back and do a, a pretty cool trip through Italy at some point. That's that's on the list. What is something that people often get wrong about you? Oh, um, I, I don't know. I think people think I'm I'm pretty serious a lot. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I, I guess I'm I'm not. Maybe you're not serious. <laughs> you're not serious. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first, folks, yeah. on the yeah. Howard podcast. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe you tell me what people get wrong about me, but uh, yeah. It is a hard question to ask. It like to answer for yourself, I think. Yeah. Um, but I could see that. I mean, we, I feel like that's a pretty common answer, especially from people like executive leaders. Cause you typically have like a certain presence when you're delivering like certain type of information, you know? And so people are like, Oh, they're serious. They're talking finances and goals and all these things. Yeah. But it's like, you're also just a human. Yeah. And like, I like to joke around and be normal. So. <laughs> Very true. Yeah. Um, okay. The last one, give us a snapshot of an ordinary moment in your life that has brought you joy. Oh, um, oh gosh. These happen all the time. Um, yeah, I've got four little kids, so it's always, it's always interesting to mm-hmm. seeing them do, you know, something, something crazy. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, we had my daughter's last soccer game uh, of the year last night. Uh, it's exciting to see them, you know, play and participate. My youngest daughter, uh, she wants to be a soccer player, but doesn't actually want to play soccer. So <laughs> I love that. That that out her whole game. Um, yeah. She wasn't feeling the best, uh, but you know, it's funny stuff like that. Um, mm-hmm. Did a, did a driveway project at home. We got that thing done late last night or two nights ago. Nice. That, that was nice just to get that thing wrapped up before the weekend. So there's lots of little yeah. moments of, of joy tucked in there. Yeah, I love that. We often, someone else on the podcast, I can't remember who said something similar of like watching their kids experience or like learn something new. is like a really special moment. Yeah. Yeah. My, my son, um, uh, she broke his Apple Watch a few weeks back, and uh, he wanted a new one. And we we're like, eh, "You're gonna have to earn. You're gonna have to earn that one." So he actually he got a, he got a job with our our landscaper. Okay. <laughs> He's eleven. That's your <laughs> landscaper. He's like, "Can you hire me, please?" <laughs> yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. So he's worked a few Saturdays to save up enough. Wow. Table get his new Apple watch. So I, that, that brought me joy though, to see him, you know, go out there and take control and, and earn it. Yeah. That's awesome. I thought you were going to say he learned how to fix his Apple watch. And I was going to be like, wow. <laughs> impressive. Yeah. I thought that's where we were going to, but this is still impressive. Yeah. You said he's 11. I yeah. mean, that's pretty, yeah. yeah. He that's went out there, he asked for a job. Okay. How, how many Saturdays is it going to take to afford the Apple watch? He paid it off in two Saturdays. So he's wow. Still, wow. Oh, yeah. Good for him. Yeah, we did pass. Okay, well, that was it for the rapid fire. Thank you, Steve, for joining us on the podcast. Again, it was so great to get to learn a little bit more about your journey, your leadership philosophy, your out your outlook and perspective on sales orgs. So thank you again for taking uh, some time out of your day. And we hope you have a great rest of your day. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks, Steve.
Wow. Another great conversation with a leader here at Arctic Wolf. I loved getting to know Steve better. Yeah, that was so great. I think, I mean, it was just even fun seeing when you get to chat with people personally, you work with, we work with so many people all the time. And then you, you have a moment just to like hear about their families. And it was just fun to see his face light up talking about his family and kids and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Him personally, which was awesome. I agree. Okay. We are in July in the heat of summer. Um, so we've got a lot of fun things happening. Most of our offices around the globe are having some sort of fun summer event. It's kind of office dependent. So if you are a PAC member, make sure that you um, check in with your office admin. Um, and then we are planning a fun virtual event for our remote PAC members as well. So more to come there soon. Um, and as always, be on the lookout in on Hallway, on Slack, in the Howler newsletter email that we send out, because um, we'll always recap kind of what's going on the month ahead. Yes. And like we always say, if you're not part of the pack, but you want to join this one of a kind community that we have here and help us on our mission to end slavery, you can find all of our open positions at articwolf.com backslash careers. Um, like we talked about at the beginning of this podcast, let's be kind and compassionate to others and ourselves. And we'll catch you in August. <laughs> we'll catch you in August. Yes, then.